Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. The week before last I attended serials and with some other commitments it meant that posting a video was difficult last week. So we've got a lot of catching up to do. As I've discussed before, we've been concentrating on establishment rates and have increased seed rates last autumn and this spring to reflect the 50% germination rate we have observed over the last two years. We have managed to take shoot counts and now ear counts. The top two fields in this table are from heavy land and the bottom two from light land. The field called Cherry Haven looks closest to the AHDB benchmarks throughout the year. Please note that although the AHDB wheat growth guide suggests 460 wheat ears per metre squared, both Yen and Nyab suggest a higher rate of 600. On that basis, all of our fields are close to the ear benchmark at last and progress and we have noticed, especially in the spring crops, poor establishment rates in straight direct drilling situations compared to where we've moved the surface inch or so with a carrier. So we have been looking at three possible cultivators. The Claydon Terrastar, Dalbo Power Chain and the Kelly Diamond Harrow. The cereals event offered the opportunity to have a good look at the Claydon Terra Star and the Dalbo power chain. More updates on the, this will follow later. I took some time on the Nyab stand. Nyab had posters up suggesting the appropriate end rate for achieving optimal yield was between 150 and 175 kilos of nitrogen per hectare to achieve a minimum nine and a half tons of wheat yield in their trials. This is significantly lower than our historic rate of 250 kilos of N per hectare to achieve our historic average of 9.2 tons per hectare in conventional wheat. Interestingly, they also noted that the weather or year as they refer to it has a significant effect on protein. In their trials, an N rate of between 150 and 175 was sufficient to produce 13% protein in 2019, while in both 2020 and 2021, a rate above 300 kilos a hectare was not enough to produce 13% protein. This makes me think of the conclusions we drew last year, that protein correlates with yield, not nitrogen. Anecdotal evidence backs this up. High protein Canadian milling wheat, for example, only achieves an average 3.3 tonnes per hectare yield. Back on the farm, following the whole crop rye harvest, the glyphosate has been sprayed on and taken out the surviving black grass patches and after a topping of a few lodged areas we mole ploughed the field. Returning with the Claydon to plant a summer cover crop mixture of linseed vetch and mustard hopefully there will be enough moisture for it to germinate. Talking of moisture we did finally receive one of the localised thunderstorms receiving 10 millimetres on Tuesday. This was a real benefit for our countryside stewardship AB9 winter bird food mixes, which we have planted in the previous week. I'm looking forward to Groundswell this week, especially listening to Nicole Masters. Please say hi if you get to see me. Thank you all for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications of when the next video goes live. See you next time. Bye.